Okay, so Matt's paper two uh, was on this morning and uh, by all accounts it went very well. I've never met a happier group of students coming out from a, a maths, leaving cert maths exam as I did today. Uh, maybe that's because they, they know that it's all done and dusted. Um, but I think it was partly because um, it was a fairly nice exam. So we'll have a look at it. I won't spend too long on each question, just a quick look and a few words about each one. Um, but before I do that, maybe let me know how you got on. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what questions you did or left out, what ones you found easy, what ones you didn't know about or you couldn't do. Um, and just let us know and we'll, uh, we'll dive into it here now. So let's have a look. Uh, first question was a probability question. I think this one was was grand. Um, a lot of good comments about this. Students found it easy enough. 15% um, of people are left footed uh, of 11 players, including one uh, goalkeeper picked at random from the population, find a probability that there's one left footed player on the team. So um, nothing too difficult there. Um, I think that was a nice question to start off with and, the, and a lot of students did it. Uh, on to question two then, a bit of coordinate geometry of the line. So not too bad there. Sub in your points, find K, just a bit of algebra there for you. Um, the next question, uh, the point is on the line. The point is a distant one unit from this line. Um, find the value of S and the corresponding value of T. So um, using a couple of different formulas there and you'll be able to, to get that. Uh, we've got a bit of a triangle here. So um, maybe you're going to use some ratios or something there um, for that one. So a bit more towards your geometry, perhaps. Uh, question three, then. Coordinate geometry of the circle. You're given a lot of information in this, which is great. Um, you're asked to find the radius of the circle. So find the radius of it there, um, which I think was not too bad. Um, I'll be doing solutions to all of these, of course, over the next few days. So keep an eye out for them. I'll have the first few solutions from paper one coming out this afternoon. So keep an eye out for them um, and over the next few days as well. Uh, there we have a, a circle C and a circle S show that they touch externally. So handy enough there. Uh, an infinite number of circles touch C externally at the same point that S touches C. Find the coordinates of the center of one of those circles apart from S. So any circle that touches it, that the center, um, I suppose the center will, could be all along the same uh, line. So uh, you can pick anything there. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be too bad at all. Um, question four, a little proof there. Cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. Small little proof. Um, and then you have to use it in the next part for a little uh, little equation. And then another trig equation over here. So your trig equations came up. I think there was another proof further on as well, a full proof as well. Uh, question five, uh, two right circular cones within a sphere. Um, so uh, geometry there, looking at that, uh, might be a bit difficult for some students to picture it and to imagine what's going on in here. But... Um, but again, not too bad of a question. Here's the proof question. So prove that if two triangles, uh, A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime are similar, then the lengths of their sides are in proportional order. So um, hopefully you should know that proof. And if you did, you would uh, you would have been able to, to do it okay. But it is the type of question that if you didn't learn the proof, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be able to attempt it really. Uh, in the diagram below, we have some parallel lines. Prove that um, AH by QB is equal to AP by HB. So um, a similar enough kind of question, except you're, you're trying to prove it in this context here. So um, it's similar to your ratios, except they're products. Um, but um, I think that... Uh, a lot of students would be able to give a good attempt at that. So this might have been the, the hardest question um, so far in the paper. And I know a few students did leave this out. 
Uh, on to part B, and a lot of students again said that part B was easier than part A. Uh, we started off with a nice trigonometry question here. Um, a triathlon, or yeah, a triathlon course, uh, triangle A, B, C. You have a bit of distance, speed, time in it, and finding distance, dif different distances and different angles. Um, so that's a nice enough question for the people who like their trigonometry. And then there's just a, a tower here, so a little bit of bringing uh, 3D into the same question, but uh, not too bad, that's a short little bit at the end. Uh, question 8 then, we have some statistics here, is it? Um, results of a maths exam, we are given a mean uh, of 176 marks, we're asked about the top 10% of students and we're asked to find the minimum mark so to find the, the minimum mark for the top 10% of students um, so a nice statistics question there uh, let's see yeah there's a good bit in this actually find the Z score so that should be all right find the p-value you've already found the Z score so you're just moving on there um, and then part c is something different uh, caretaker is a box with 23 room keys in it 12 of the keys are for general classrooms, 6 for science labs and 5 for offices. 4 keys are drawn at random. Uh, what's the probability? So a bit more probability in here then as well. Um, just with this statistics. And I've always said this, the statistics and the probability, they always come together. So you need to know both of them uh, together uh, in order to be able to do the long questions for them. Question 9, a bit more trig here. Uh, we have a triangle there, an airplane. You're asked to find a, a time, how long it took to fly. So you're going to have to find a distance there as well, I'd imagine. Um, average fuel consumption. So there's actually a bit more. They're bringing a lot more into it now um, rather than just your, your basic bit of trigonometry. Uh, there's a function here uh, for volts. Physics students might have found this a bit easier, but I don't think you needed any real physics knowledge to be able to do that one. Um, so that's question nine. Does it continue on there? It does. There's another bit. Um, find one value for T where the voltage is 110 volts. So working through those, working through those functions there for that one. Um, and then question ten. Um, and I think on this one, a lot of students actually did this question as opposed to paper one where they didn't. So. Um, we have it's it, the context of the question is donating blood and percentages of the population having a certain blood type um, so at a blood donation clinic 10 donors give blood one after the other find a probability that the 10th person is the third O negative donor so that's a, um, a very commonly uh, a very common type of question that you get in probability um, when you have um, it's the the Bernoulli trials with the the tenth person being the third O negative donor in this case, um, so it's a, a, a very common type of question. Uh, you would have seen it before. Um, minimum number of blood donors required, uh, so that the probability of at least one of them uh, being O negative is greater than zero point nine seven. So a little bit different there. Um, and then on to part B, moves on. Away from that, a homeowner has a problem with the heating system. Plumber identified a problem as a faulty part. Homeowner knows that in 80% of cases, the part will fix the problem. It will be 70 euro. If the pair does not work, a new part will have to be bought for 150 euro. So there will be an additional labor cost of 80 euro to replace the old part with new. Find the expected value. So obviously the expected value will be uh, above the 70 euros. Um, but we have a probability of it being a certain amount and then we can work it out there. And then there's a bit more expected value here, I think. Life insurance paying out um, and you're asked to, to find the annual premium it should charge its customers, um, which in an average year would generate this level of profit. So expected value again. So I think overall that was a good paper. A lot of, uh, a lot of doable questions in it. There were some that were... A good bit more tricky obviously it is a higher level paper so you're going to get that but overall i think it was a good paper and i hope you all did very well in it and
don't forget to let me know how you got on yourself and thanks for watching and best of luck in the rest of your exams.